Innalhamdalillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru Wa na'udhu billahi min syururi anfusina Wa min sayyati a'malina Man yahdihillahu falamudillalah Wa man yudlil falahadiyalah Ashadu an la ilaha illallah Wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Wa ba'dal a'unzu billahi minna shaytanir rajim Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu attaqallaha haqqa tuqatih Wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun Ya ayuhal nasu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqaku min nafsin wahida Wa khalaq minha zawjaha وبث من حما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتق الله إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتق الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي حد محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أو كما قال درس برادرس and sisters in Islam. We have begun this morning talk by wishing all of you may the peace of Allah and His mercy and blessing be upon us all. Amin. This morning do not mean anything to all of us if we do not begin our day by asking Allah to bless our morning and our evening. I would like to call upon all the brothers and sisters who are with us today. Let us make a short du'a together. Not only I recite and you say Amin, but let us recite the prayer together so that all of us will be blessed by Allah. I am going to guide you slowly in this du'a and we hope everyone who are here will follow me in reciting this short du'a. الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بك أصبحنا وبك أمسينا وبك نحيا وبك Namud Wa ilayka al-nushur Raise up your wife, brothers and sisters Bismillahillazhi La yadurru Ma'asmihi Shay'un fil ard Wa la fi s-sama'i Wa huwa s-sami'u al-alim Raditu billahi rabba Wa bil-islami dina وبمحمد النبي وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين We ask Allah to bless our morning because we need Allah's blessing We ask Allah to keep on blessing our evening because we still need His blessing and we ask Allah to bless our living because we want to live with the blessing of Allah not just live for the sake of living like animals like people who disbelieve Allah they live but they live for the sake of living for dunya not for akhirah but we live here for akhirah because the Prophet said ad-dunya khuliqat lakum walakinnakum khuliqat lil akhirah this world is made by Allah to serve us. We are made by Allah to go to Akhirah, not for dunya. We ask Allah to make us all Muslim prepared 
prepared to go back to Allah because sooner or later we are going to die nobody will live forever whether you are young you are old you are healthy you are sick you are rich you are poor everybody is going to die kullu nafsin dha'ikatul maut every living thing will perish we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us that we will never die until we become a mu'min until we become a muslim wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun make sure that none of us depart from this world until we have submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we live one will die one only once only one chance there's no way for you to say oh Allah give me another chance no more so make sure that you choose the right way to die don't die for dunya don't die for people don't die for your job don't die for your business don't die because of your wife because of your husband because of your children make sure that wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun make sure that inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lilla for who lil say inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillah rabbil alamin amin ya rabbil alamin fellow brothers and sisters today before i continue we know how important to save our iman iman is the most valuable thing in akhirah in akhirah allah is not going to check how much money you have allah is not going to ask you how many children you have how many wives you have allah is not going to ask you that allah is not going to check your degree your diploma whether you are a doctor your ba holder ma phd no he is going to ask you anything of this but what allah is going to ask you is about your iman and the topic today is how to save our iman i want the brothers especially please respond when i ask you something respond yeah respond to me please do we all have iman now are we mu'min i don't hear you are you mu'min yes. yes you must express yourself don't hide uh, yeah i think so not what you think so of course we are mu'min are we mu'min yes. alhamdulillah this expression is important we want to express ourselves so that the world know that we are mu'min it's important do you think we need to save our iman yes, yes. alhamdulillah alhamdulillah how can you save your iman how can we save our iman inshallah i will share with you now the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam remind us with one saying i'm going to remind you again and again every time when i give lecture to all my muslim brothers and sisters i always remind them why because they are not responding to this call even after reminding them they forgot again they keep on forgetting forgetting and there is our nature al insan and your fitra is nasia you always keep on forgetting and that's why allah said wa fa inna zikratan fa al mu'minin remind each other remind each other because reminding each other always bring benefit to people who are believers the prophet sallallahu sallam said la tadkulun al jannah because the only thing that can qualify us to enter jannah is iman not your car not your job not your office not your your iman and iman cannot be collective oh my father he is a mufti i'm okay because my father will recommend me to go to jannah no no you can be a mufti even the prophet no cannot save his son prophet lut cannot save his wife cannot save you because everybody must save their own soul 
and the only thing can save your soul is with iman and the prophet said la tadkhuluna al jannah la tadkhuluna al jannah none of us can enter paradise hatta tu'minu until you have iman until you believe in allah without iman you cannot enter paradise but i'm the president even you are a president even you are king but you cannot enter paradise without iman and then the prophet continue wala tu'minu hatta tahabbu hatta tahabbu you cannot be a believer until you love one another now how do you love one another do you love one another do you love your brothers muslim do you love each other sisters inshallah shake your head your head i need some some reaction do you love each other yes don't say no i know maybe it's your culture this also yes this also no our culture yes is like this this one is no so always remember if you said you love each other and if you want allah to love you do you want allah to love you i don't hear you alhamdulillah yes your voice is important we need your voices the prophet asked you ask all of us awala adul lukum awala adul lukum ala shay'in iza fa'altumu iza fa'altumu tahabbtum the prophet asking us shall i not tell you of that wish will strengthen your love between yourself the prophet is asking us do you want to know how can you strengthen your love among yourself do you want to know do we want to know alhamdulillah if you say no i keep quiet i go to another topic but since you said you want to know the prophet said afsus salam bainakum afsus salam bainakum spread the word of peace the greeting of islam among yourself one thing i want you to do for the sake of allah brothers and sisters for the sake of allah not because of me now you are sitting so close to each other please hold your hand hold your hand each other for the sake of allah hold your hand hold your hand feel the heat feel the iman is coming through the iman is coming through it's sure to come true because you do for the sake of allah not for the sake of anybody the sisters hold your hand it's very strange you are sitting beside your sister you do not know her you don't even care to say assalamu alaikum brother you don't even say that and you don't even say to them i love you for the sake of allah now this is what i want to say for the sake of allah so that allah will strengthen your love say salam to your right say salam say salam to the left when you give salam you must see each other now everybody is facing and they don't see each other tell your brother i love you for the sake of allah say to him say to him say to each other allah allah will love you today more brothers and sisters each time when you love something for the sake of allah when you love somebody for the sake of don't keep it in your heart yeah i love him you love your husband tell him every day i love you darling tell him and if you husband love your wife tell her i love you darling yes i love you when before married before married i love you after married what is love now we are husband and wife what do you need love now the prophet when he loves somebody he always said to the person i love you for the sake of allah i love you for the sake of allah because the prophet said if you say this to somebody 
then Allah is going to love him more. And that person will say back to you, Habakallah allazi habaptani li aji. May Allah love you more because Allah just love me more because of what you say just now. So by keep on saying this good word, Allah will strengthen the love among us. When you have that love, you save your iman. Iman is based on love. And that's why if you love something or somebody more than Allah, you commit shirk fi muhabba. It's a shirk. It is a shirk. And if you commit shirk, Allah said, Innahu may yushrik billah faqad haram Allah alayhi al-jannah wa ma'wahu nar Indeed, anyone, if you commit shirk with Allah, whether shirk in aqidah, shirk in ibadah, shirk in niyat, shirk in muhabbah, then Allah said, you will never enter paradise. And when you don't enter paradise, Allah said, your destination is nar, and you will never be helped by anybody. Nobody can help you over there. Here, somebody can help you. Your brother can help you. Your wife can help you. Your husband can help you. Your children can help you. The most important thing, you must love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman. How to save your Iman? That's how you save your Iman. By loving fellow brothers and sisters for the sake of Allah. And always give salam. Salam. When a person gives you salam, raise your voice. Raise your voice. I will give you another salam. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Not good. Not good. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah Akbar. This is the salam. This is the real salam. Not salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Salam alaikum. What is it? With the love. Because you love. When you love somebody, you are going, I love you. Don't say, I love you. I love you. What is this? Be proud. Be happy. Brothers and sisters in Islam. And Allah said again. You see, Allah loves us more than you love yourself. And that's why Allah wants you to eat halalan tayyibah. Ya ayyuhanna kulu mimma fil ardi halalan tayyibah. O you mankind, O people. Eat, drink. What Allah has provided for you that is good. Halalan tayyibah. Not only halal, but halal and good food. Healthy food. Quality food. Why? Because Allah loves you. He do not want you to destroy yourself. And that's why Allah said, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu, O you who believe, O you who believe, Ku anfusakum, Continue, Ku anfusakum, Wa ahlikum, Nara, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah, you memorize the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you love Allah, you memorize his ayat. Because you love the Prophet, you memorize his hadith. If not, how can you say, I love Allah? How can you say you love Allah if you have no time to read the book of Allah? You don't memorize the ayat of Allah. How can you say you love Prophet Muhammad? You don't even memorize one saying of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi One hadith also you don't memorize. How can you say you love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi Just an example. Allah said, Ya ayyuhalladzina amanu Anfusakum. Anf Save your soul, yourself first. Before you call other people to Islam, you become a good Muslim first. You become a practicing Muslim. And after you become a practicing Muslim, then you call other to Islam. If not, that person become good Muslim and you are a bad Muslim. And a bad Muslim, we are worried you will die without Iman. Remember, Al Iman Yazid wa Yankus. Iman will increase. Iman will decrease. Al Iman Yazid bi ta'ah wa amala salih. Wa Yankus bil ma'asi. Iman is going to increase, get stronger and stronger. If you are more faithful, you always take care of your iman take care of your amal take care of your deeds 
your iman will increase. But the minute you do things haram, the iman will drop. It's going to drop. It's like the share market today. Sometimes it went up, most of the time he comes down. There is our iman, Yazid Uyankus. Iman of the Anbiya was Salihin Alhamdulillah. Yazid Walayankus. The iman of the Prophets, the iman of the Sahaba, the Siddiqeen, the Salihin. Every day they increase because every day they increase their amal, they increase their ta'ah. Anything they learn, they act upon it. Any hadith they know, they act upon it. Not like us, our iman is weak. This conference, 10 days, Alhamdulillah, iman increase. After that, I don't know where is our iman. Now, Alhamdulillah, your iman is being charged every day. Your iman is being charged for 10 days. After that, only you know and Allah knows. So, there is our iman. The iman of the angel, La Yazid Walayankus, is always stagnant. The angels, they don't have any optional deeds. They just do what Allah wants them to do. If there's no command, they wait. La Yaksun Allah. Yeah. ma yukmarun. That is the angel. They will never go against Allah. They will just do when Allah command them to do so. We, we can do more optional sunnah, nawafil, tatawwa, that will increase our iman. Every day you see another Muslim, Salaamu Alaikum, you increase your iman. By saying, Assalamu Alaikum, you increase your iman. A smile to your brothers, you increase your iman. Look at your wife, Every morning, smile at her. You get, you increase your iman. Because a smile is a sadaqah. A smile is a sadaqah. The sister, when you look at your husband, smile at him. You know, brothers. Do you know that every day, your wife always wake up before you? The first person you want to see in your life is your wife. And the last person you're going to see also your wife. So please, look at them with a smiling face. It's a sadaqah. It increases your iman. And before you sleep, look at them with a smiling face. Insha'Allah, you get all the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the ways. Take care of our iman. How to do that? Do whatever Allah wants you to do. Whatever the Prophet wants you to do. And stay away from muharramat. That is thing that is haram. And what the Prophet say no, you said no. It's like the Prophet ﷺ remind us how to attain, how to attain a strong iman, a perfect iman. So the Prophet said, Man habbalillah wa abghadalillah wa aqtalillah wa man alillah faqad istakmal al iman. The Prophet said that 1,400 years ago, the Prophet have remind you. You want to take care of your iman? You want to save your iman? First, you must love for the sake of Allah. Love what Allah loves. You must hate for the sake of Allah. You hate what Allah hates. And what the Prophet loves, you must love. What the Prophet hates, you must hate. And you give for the sake of Allah. Give for the sake of Allah. Every cent that you spend for the cause of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it as an amal as an infaq and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you to strengthen your iman give for the sake of Allah not for the sake of dunya give spend on your family for the sake of Allah on your wife on your children send them to good school for the sake of Allah even expensive for the sake of Allah inshallah Allah will reward you Wamana don't spend any money to do something that will bring harm to your iman that will destroy your iman don't spend any money that will commit sin sometimes you spend money but that money is going to bring sin to you you are helping people to go against Allah you are helping people to go against the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. how can you be blessed by Allah and that's why the Prophet said, Man ahabba lillah wa abghada lillah wa aqta lillah wa mana alifaqadistakmal al-iman. 
you love for the sake of Allah, you hate for the sake of Allah, give for the sake of Allah, and you withhold for the sake of Allah, you have a perfect Iman. Insha'Allah, our Iman will be perfect. When you have the perfect Iman, that means you are saving your Iman. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, save your soul. You must have that quality. You can love, you can hate, you can give. Anything you give for the sake of Allah, please remember, brother and sister, Allah remind us. Every cent you spend in the cost of Allah, Allah replace. Allah will give it back to you. Not only a dollar to a dollar, but a dollar will multiply to 10 until 700. But you must have yakin. Every money that you spend, you make sure you spend for Allah. Your wife, you want to spend, make sure that she buy clothes that cover her aura. She buy things that is halal. Your children, make sure that they spend in something that is halal. Don't give them the money to do something that is haram. Don't allow your daughter to use the money that you give to them to buy some clothes, some garment that do not cover the aura. Because when they do not cover the aura, each time when they leave the house, they commit haram. They commit sins. And Allah is going to hold you responsible because the money comes from you. You are the one who gives them the money. But you do not control them. And even Hadith Qudsi, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has mentioned, Ya Ibn Adam, Anfiq unfiq alayk. O oh, children of Adam, spend. You spend for Allah, Allah will spend on you. You spend for Allah, Allah will give you back more than what you have given for Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is important, you must have taqwa. Whoever have taqwa in Allah, fear Allah, love Allah, do for the sake of Allah, and withhold for the sake of Allah, there is taqwa. Then Allah will show you ways, ways, not one way, many ways to solve your problem. You have what problem? Financial problem? Family problem? Any problem, Allah said, I am going to help you. I am going to show you ways out. The important thing, you must have taqwa. And after you have taqwa, Allah guarantee you, He is going to show you ways to solve your economic problem, financial problem, social problem, family problem, domestic problem, all problem, Allah will help you. And when Allah help you, Allah said, min la yahtasib. Allah will give you risk. risk. You have the right iman, Allah will give you risk from ways that you cannot imagine, brothers and sisters. As long as you have iman, as long as you have taqwa, Allah is going to bless you, brothers and sisters. And the Prophet ﷺ remind us again, see how to save your iman. I'm going to relate this to our culture. The same go to the Muslim in India. The same happened to the Muslim in my country. What is happening to the Muslim? The Muslim today, they are destroying their iman every day. And not only one hour in a day, 24 hours, you are killing, destroying your iman. How do you do that? What do you mean by destroying our iman every day? The Prophet said, Man allaka tamimatan. Man allaka tamimatan. Fakat ashraq. Fakat ashraq. This hadith is rewired from Ahmad. Whoever, any Muslim, who use any amulet, string around the wrist, black string, yellow string, brown string, white string, or any string, or you tie around your belly, your waist, or around your neck, black string, yellow string, green string, any string. Why do you do that? Why do you have all this amulet azima here? Here, why? 
Tell me, brother, why? Do you believe that this string is going to protect you? Do you believe in that? I want you to do something for me, brother, for the sake of Allah. For the sake, if you do it for the sake of Allah, Allah is going to forgive you because you are sincere. Please, brothers, brothers first, raise up your right hand. Raise up your right hand. Raise up your right hand. You know what? I'm going to look at your hand. I want to see there's string or not. Alhamdulillah, no string. Down your left hand. Raise up your left hand now. Left hand. Is there any string? Can you look at your brothers? Look at your brother. Look at your sister. Is there any string? No string. Alhamdulillah. 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 When you have no string, you have saved your iman. But you have wash. Wash, okay. No problem. Wash don't destroy your iman. You can have wash. I also have wash. But I have washed my right, not left. Right. Anything good, right. Anything good, right. Raise up your hand again, left hand, left hand, left hand, left hand. Ah, I saw some watches in the left hand. Now while you are sitting, change it to the right. Change to the right. For the sake of Allah, don't take this thing lightly. This is the teaching of Prophet Muhammad. He loves you to do everything good, right, right, right. This is important. Because the Muslim always look at their time for salah, for prayer. Always see the right. Don't take it lightly. Oh, what is this? This is a small matter. Na'uzubillah. Eating, drinking, right, right, right. A small matter. Na'uzubillah. The Prophet said, La ta'kulu, la tashra bishimau. Don't eat, don't drink with your left hand. The Prophet said, Don't, don't, don't. And you say, No problem. Where is your iman? Do you know more than Prophet Muhammad? You know there is shaitan inside every one of us. If you eat with your left hand, you are feeding the shaitan. Shaitan grow bigger and bigger, stronger and stronger. You become weaker and weaker. How can you fight him now? Each time you drink with your left hand, shaitan is getting stronger again. Because you feed him day and night. But when you eat with your right hand, Bismillah, shaitan have no food. He have no drink. He cannot sleep when you sleep with dua. At least, Bismillahumma amutu wa ahya. Shaitan cannot sleep with you. If he cannot sleep with you, he get very tired. He have no energy to fight with you. But today, Shaitan, all the Shaitan that we have, they are very strong. Why? Because we are feeding them. We love them. Nauz billahi min al zalik. But I stay here, stay here, stay here. Nauz billahi min al zalik. Stay here. I feed you. I drink with you. What is this? Are you sincere in asking Allah to protect you from shaitan? Are you sincere to save your iman? Brothers and sisters in Islam, please. Alhamdulillah, your hand is free. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Last time, when I first became Muslim, some imam, not normal people, imam, when he saw me praying five times a day, he loved me a lot. Then he came to me. Young man, come here. I love you. I want you to be strong. I want you to be protected. This is a special string. Yellow color. Royal color. You tie here. Every Jumaah, you put under the smoke. And ask Allah to protect you through this string. I do not know. I jahil. I just became Muslim. So each time I wear, I feel strong. Like incredible hug. When I forget to wear, I feel weak. Na'uzubillah. Until one day, one of my sheikh, my first teacher, is from India. The one who convert me is from Old Delhi. Allah Yarham al marhum. Maulana Yaqub Al-Ansari The Imam of Pakistani Mosque in my country He is the one who converted me He told me, Haram I stay away Alhamdulillah Because we believe in Allah protection Hasbi Allah wa ni'ma wa qil You want to make tawakal? Tawakal to Allah Iya ka na'budu Wa iya ka nasta'in we have been reciting every day iya kana'budu wa iya kana'sta'in oh allah to you only only to you 
I worship not I we worship and only to you we ask help anything spiritual ask Allah to protect you call upon Allah call me I respond don't call the ghostbuster sometimes in our country we have a group of ghostbuster you want to chase any ghost in your house call this group how much very cheap maybe three hundred dollar per session because it's group it's group is jama'ah you got to spend more money you don't have to do that recite al-baqarah any place that you feel there is something is going on recite al-baqarah inshallah the prophet said any house that there is a recitation of al-baqarah the shaitan will not stay there the shaitan will leave because he don't like to live in a house where there is Al-Quran being recited as important I have some student who call me Ustaz, please come to my house there's a lot of bad evil spirit I said please if I come to your house I can recite but you must recite I'm not staying in that house you must recite so after one week they call me again I said we have recited but the shaitan getting stronger I say na'udzubillah you recite al-baqarah the shaitan gets stronger something is wrong tell me how do you recite al-baqarah we invite the imam of haramain to come and recite al-baqarah we invite abdurrahman sudais to come and recite al-baqarah wow I say you don't inform me you recite the great imam yes but in a CD tape recorder you put a CD of al-baqarah from abdurrahman sudais I said the shaitan will not disturb the CD. The shaitan will not destroy the DVD. But what the Prophet said is not the CD that must recite. You as an individual who want to protect yourself from the shaitan, your iman, you must recite. It's so simple. Just open the Quran. Try your best. Allah is going to bless you, brother. Please, you open a shop. You feel the shop is not being blessed. Recite Al-Baqarah. Still, recite Ali Imran. Insha'Allah. Yaqeen. Yaqeen. Allah is going to help you, brothers and sisters. And the Prophet wasallam also remind us how to take care of our Iman. How to safeguard our Iman. Because Iman is something very, very important. The Prophet ﷺ reminds us, ahadukum hatta yuhibba li aqi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. You cannot be a true believer. You cannot have a true iman if you don't love your brother, love your sister, like how you love for yourself. To the father, to the father. How do you love your daughter? How do you show your love towards your daughters? Do you force your daughter to marry somebody that she don't love? That is haram. Forcing in marriage is haram. Do you give your daughter away to somebody who you know that this man, your future son-in-law, is not a good Muslim? He's a drinker. He's a playboy. Yeah? He's a drinker. He's a liar. He's a gambler. You know. But now, he sent some per, her family to ask for the hand of your daughter. Do you give your daughter to that kind of man? If you do that, you make Iyana. You fail your daughter, the Prophet did say. Sittatu ashya un gharibatun fi sittati mawadi. There are six things that is very strange that is going to happen to this ummah. Six strange thing is going to happen. One of it, a good daughter, al Muslima, a Saliha, a good Muslima, your daughter, you pass her, you give her away to a man that is Zalim, a man that don't practice Islam, don't pray, you know, and your daughter is praying. She is a praying daughter, a good daughter, but you pass her to a man, you give her to a man that don't pray. This is strange, gharib. Allah said, you don't marry 
the man or the woman until he or she become a believer to save her to save her iman to save her future to save the coming generation make sure that you match people who have the right iman and do you know brothers if you have given your daughter to the wrong person and now your daughter cannot stay anymore with that husband the husband is so bad rude abuse her belittle her even when she want to cover her aura the husband said, I don't like you to cover your aura. You look ugly. You look old. And he is forcing your daughter to open her aura in front of the non-mahram. And he wants your daughter to wax sexy and to go to party with him. You know this and your daughter complained to you, brother, please save them. They need your protection. If you got to pay, to free your daughter pay them this is the money the dowry you give to my daughter 10,000 I give it back I want my daughter back you have the right to protect your daughter even after they got married because in the Quran Allah gave the woman two rights one is fasak the second is shikak if you know that your husband do not treat you well abuse you when you have the right to be honored you have the right to make an official complaint to the qadi and ask for your freedom there is fasak you free yourself you have the right don't let them abuse you because to save your iman the prophet said la ta'atul makhluq fi ma'asiyatillah you cannot obey your husband in doing something against Allah if your husband said don't cover yourself you cannot obey him I must cover. If you cover, I will divorce you. Alhamdulillah. Say Alhamdulillah because you want to free yourself from this kind of man who will destroy your iman. You suffer a bit in dunya, Allah will reward you kindly in akhirah. You must love for the sake of Allah. Sister, remember, your iman is more important than your husband. But I'm not encouraging you for a divorce today. Oh, no, after this, I'm going, to, I'm going to look for the sheikh. No, it's a little bit, I complain. No, it's serious. You must. Uh, and if the Qadi failed to give this right to you, you must talk to your parent, father. Shikok means your daughter is coming back to you and ask you to help her, protect her. Can you say, oh, I'm sorry. You are the wife of somebody now. I have no right upon you anymore. My daughter, be patient. Sabar, sabar, sabar. And destroy her iman. You cannot do that. As a good father, you must save your family. After saving your soul, you have the iman. Alhamdulillah. Now you must save your family. Your daughter is still your daughter. If the man, your son-in-law don't respect her, beat her up, and she come back to you, ask you to help, how can you say, I cannot help you, daughter? Allah said, you were given the right as shiqa, and this hukum of shiqa, you can get it in surah, chapter 4, verses 35. Allah give the authority to the parent. You are the one who give away your daughter. You are the one who can protect her. If the man said, your son-in-law said to you, I want my wife back. Send her back. You said, no, deal with me. I am the father. If you abuse my daughter, I will never allow her to go back to you. You can call your family to come and talk to me now. Let the parents discuss among themselves and find the best solution to solve the problem. Why? Because you want to save the iman of your daughter. You know what happened lately in the newspaper? Some sisters who belong to a strong Muslim family just run away and she is prepared to murtad, to leave her religion. She is prepared to sacrifice her iman because of the love towards a man. That's why they say, love is blind. Love is what? Love is what, brother? It's blind. 
you cannot see love can you see love of course you can't see love can you feel love can you feel love yes do you have the feeling to be loved do you want to be loved yes you want your father to love you you want your mother to love you you want Allah to love you you want Prophet Muhammad sallallahu to love you so how do you gain the love if you want Allah to love you just do what Allah want you to do if you want the Prophet to love you to give you this shafa'ah you just do what he want you to do that's why the Prophet said la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yakuna hawahu taba'an lima jiktubih you cannot be a believer a true believer until you command your desire to follow my teaching and the Prophet said again la yu'minu ahadukum hatta ahabba ilay min walidihi wa walidihi wa nas ajma'in you cannot be a true believer you cannot have the right iman until you love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa more than yourself your family and your I mean your friends if you love them more than the Prophet you don't have a true iman so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save our iman brothers and sisters and father once again once again I remind you please protect your daughter and also protect your son because the Prophet did said if you marry your son to a lady to a girl who do not cover herself who do not do what Allah want them to do there is also zulm there is also zulm because your son is a good son he read the Quran every day but that their future daughter-in-law she love music your son love Quran she love music what are you going to do you should marry your son to a girl that can protect his iman by doing that inshallah Allah will save our iman so brother and sister once again to brothers I want to remind you protect your daughter protect your daughter and the sister remember if your husband ill treat you abuse you go back to your parent that is your right go back and ask the protection from your father again may Allah save us and may Allah make us among the people from this ayah in surah tahrim ya ayuhallazina amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara all you who believe save your iman save your soul and your family from hellfire may Allah bless us amin ya rabbil alamin subhanakallahumma bihamdik Shadu wa la ilaha ila anta astaghfiru ka wa atubu ilai Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum brother Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh I am Asma Shams I am from UP Allahabad By profession I am a computer teacher My question is If any of our relatives Does some un-Islamic activity And do not want to understand Then can we do qata rahmi as we recite in the du'a'i qunud wa nakhlau wa natruku man yafjuruka for the sake of Allah if he is fajir, fasiq qati' rahim qati' rahim the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said la yadkul janna man qati' or la yadkul janna qati' you will not enter paradise if you cut the family ties no you cannot do that even they are bad but you must have patience dealing with them you must try to save them sometimes the parents save you sometimes you must save them they may be very wrong nobody is perfect sisters but you must not give up on your parent like how your parent now give up on you for you, the sake of Allah even for the sake of Allah Allah wants you to have patience not to cut the tears but we decide in the dua qunud yes I know that ayah is we ask Allah to protect us it's not that you ask Allah to give you the strength to cut off that relationship you cannot okay. because that even your parents who are not yet Muslim even they are not Muslim you still must try your best to get close to them and call them back to Islam never give up like the Prophet never give up to his uncle he now give up to all the other Quraysh who have been bad to him, who ill-treat him, humiliate him. But he always have patience and ask Allah to give dua. So have 
Sabar, insha'Allah. May Allah bless you and your parents, insha'Allah. Brother in the front there, please. My name is Santosh. I am from Karnataka. My question is, in Quran, eating blood is haram. But when Muslim people go to hospital, their transfusion taking blood. How would they save their Imam? Hayakallah. Alhamdulillah. Now the brother is asking, in the Quran said, Inna ma harma alaykumul maytata wa dama. Allah haram, dead meat and also blood. And the brother is saying, how about when we go to the hospital, we need some blood transfusion. Yeah, because that is not food. We are not drinking, we are not eating. It's something to do with health that you need. You need to go through, that is darura. When the doctor confirms you need that, then you can have it. There's nothing wrong. But of course, if the doctor said, no, you got to drink blood, you say you don't drink. But nobody will, will uh, transfer the blood to you by drinking. They use, just use a tube and something that go through your blood vein and they supply the blood that you need. So that is okay, no problem. No, no problem. Go into the body only, no? No problem at all. Even the blood come from the Chinese. Don't worry. Even they have been eating pork. It now means when you go inside your body, you have the pork inside your body. Don't worry about that. Allah is Karim. Yeah? May Allah bless you, inshallah. Nothing wrong, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, we'll take a question at the back there now for the brothers. Assalamu alaikum. I'm Muzammil Sheikh and I'm doing my MBA. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. As you correctly said, we need to love each other. But we find many brothers and sisters having relationship before marriage and parents are also not aware of the situation. Even if they come to know, they say they are excused by saying we are just friends. So how fair it is it justifiable in Islam? Islam do not allow any free mixing. We all know about that. The teaching of Islam is not only today. The do and don't is from 1,400 years ago. But because we are living in a different kind of environment that is not helping our Iman, the free mixing and all the other kind of relationship. Now the best thing for us to do, brothers and sisters, please, put Islam ahead of the tradition. Don't make it difficult for the couple to get married. When you know that your daughter is starting to have feelings, when you know your son is starting to have that feeling, marry them for the sake of Allah. If you have some job, offer the job to them, to your future son-in-law or your daughter-in-law. Save their iman. You know that until today, most of the people who love Allah, they always encourage their children to get married when they are young. Because they know. When you are young, you, all this feeling is starting to grow. It's starting to develop. So the best way is to marry them. If you don't do that because of tradition, because of this, then there are a lot of fitna coming to the family. If you can protect them without that kind of relationship, Alhamdulillah. If you can, you got to be serious about their Iman. About their Iman. Save their Iman. Get them married as husband and wife. Jazakallahu khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Myself, Farha bint Hakimullah, and I'm a student. My question to you is, as you mentioned in your talk, Iman is increased by doing good deeds, that is, Amal Swale. But if someone, especially parents, prevents us to do many good deeds, then how I do this to increase our Iman? Should we do good deeds by hiding them? The Prophet وسلم, always encouraged us to do good deeds and to take care of our Iman and our Amal so the good deeds will not be uh, burned out will be destroyed because if you do good deeds with Riyah to show off it will destroy your Amal everything you do must do for the sake of Allah so how do you do it? like what the Prophet said one of the person that Allah is going to give them shade in Yawmul Qiyamah is a person who gives donation, charity with the right hand and left hand knows not that means very secretly like example why the Prophet said Afdal salah fi baytihi illa maktuba. The best prayer is at home. The best prayer, the best namaz is in the house. Except maktuba, fardu prayer. Why? Because he wanted to do extra deeds, not to show off to the people. Secretly because that will protect your ikhlas. And that will protect your iman. Yes, that is the best way to do.
do it secretly but if you need to do it openly because you need to encourage other people then you're allowed to do that but to increase your iman by doing all the charity work to do the righteous deed is not difficult every day if you see somebody you smile for the sake of Allah you increase your iman you see something on the floor some nails some glasses or something that may harm other people you pick it up and throw in a safe place you get a sadaqah your iman will increase Jazakallahu khair Alhamdulillah Okay, we'll take a question from our young brother from Malaysia here. Please state your name and profession. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. My name is Muhammad Nuruddin. I'm a student from Malaysia. Uh, Sheikh Husseini, I would like to ask you, talking about Iman, is there any sign for us to know or feel about Iman and sweetness of Iman? Naam. And as a student and youth, what is your message and advice to us? Jazakallah khair. Allah yabarak khair. Now, Iman, of course, have some sweetness. There is halawatul iman. One, you can love Allah and the Prophet above everything. You know, you have the sweetness of iman. You can feel it, of course. إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوهُبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا This is what Allah said. If you want to know whether the iman is still healthy, still strong, when the ayat of Allah is being recited, your iman increase. When people mention the word of Allah, the fear come to you. If you have that feeling, that shows your iman is still living. But if you don't have that feeling anymore, people can say, Allah says so. I don't feel anything. Example, if people say, Call Allah Ta'ala. I don't feel anything. If people say, Call Obama. Oh. Obama say something I want to hear what he say so you respond to the call of somebody more than to Allah that show that your iman is no more there and the last thing last sign the Prophet said if you have iman is a ra'a minkum al munkar you see some munkar you must change it with your hand with your power with the authority if you can with your tongue if you can your heart must hit that act that is haram if you don't have that hatred inside you, that means there's no more iman. That is the weakest iman you have. Your heart go against, hate something that is haram. Inshallah. Of course, there will be sign. You can feel it. And may Allah make, grow, I mean, uh, enhance our feeling so that we become more sensitive towards anything that is haram. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair. A uh, question from the brothers at the back. Assalamu alaikum Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Najmu Saqib from Sholapur. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. One of my friend, Muslim friend, he married to a girl who was Christian, converted to Islam. Alhamdulillah. Uh, the girl's family were not aware of that. Uh, they uh, married to each other. They were in the nikah for six months. And after that, their family came to know about that whole thing. And they tortured that girl and I don't know what they did with that girl. Uh, she turned to Christian uh, again now. What is to be done? May Allah protect us and protect her. Normally, if it happened in my country, the first thing I will do when a man wants to marry a sister who was not a born Muslim, but from the Christian family, I would always advise her to become a Muslim first. She said, my parents disagreed. I said, let us talk to your parents. This is how I will do. I will talk to her, give her the right uh, understanding about Islam. Islam wants you to sacrifice. Brave, you must be brave. You must love for the sake of Allah. If you can't talk to your family, let me talk to your family. This is what we will do back home. And then after we talk to the family, they have no problem. Because of course, you are there. She is the daughter of that family. Suddenly, she wants to marry somebody without telling the parent. The parent feel very hurt. She must be fair to the parent, talk to them. If they disagree, then she know how to tackle that problem. Islam do not want us to run away from problem. You must face the problem. Don't go in and like nap the daughter of somebody. It's not good. Normally, back home, people want to come to Muslim. I don't know about here, but in my country, 
I will say to them, do your parents know that you want to get married with this Muslim man? They said, yes, I think so, because we have been together for some time. Okay. They have been together for some time. You know what, what that means. Yeah? And then I said, do you know that you must be a Muslim? Yes. Do your parents know that you must be a Muslim? No. Do you think they will object if you said you want to be a Muslim? Maybe. Maybe. I said, let them know. Share with your mother. Ask your mother and see how she responds. I love to do that. You know why? I want her to respect her parent. And I want the parent to respect Islam. If the Muslim do things openly, you must have the Muslim to protect her, to help her. If the situation gets worse, she must have patience. And if she asks protection, then we must give her protection. But day one, don't get married without the knowledge of the parent. Don't do that if possible. She must have patience. She must be, be brave enough to face her parent. Who can give her that kind of feeling? We. We must give her the right advice and the right support. And may Allah help her. Whatever happened, happened already. Qadr Allah wa masha'a fa'ala. Whatever we can rectify, we rectify it. Don't give up. Help her in any way that you can. A lot of people who are not yet Muslim don't like the Muslim maybe because of our own doing, because we do not do things properly. We do not do things openly. We do it secretly like something is haram going on, hidden, and they don't like all these things. So may Allah bless us, brothers. Yeah. May Allah bless us. Okay, alhamdulillah, we'll take uh, another question from the sisters. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa I'm Seema, yeah. I'm, uh, I have been recently converted. Alhamdulillah. And I'm sis. working. Now, according to the Hindu um, rites, they some, in my office, they offer uh, prashad. And uh, I have been told from the Muslim side that this is uh, haram. They have not to eat the food of the gods invoked uh, other than Allah. Now, the same situation happens at my home too. Now, some Muslims advised me that uh, you, uh, instead of uh, telling that I'm not, I'm not going to eat that food, you just eat as a halal food, taking a name, uh, reciting Bismillah, or either you throw away. Now, I don't want to throw away that food, thinking that it is a blessing of Allah, means uh, it is a food actually. It is sin to throw away the food. How, what, how am I to do, deal this situation? Okay. Jazakallah khair. If I'm not wrong, sister, I just want to understand your question correctly. We are Muslim. We are revered. Alhamdulillah. Allah give you your hidayah. May Allah strengthen your iman and increase your patience, your sabr. I mean, uh, you are asking how about if uh, you are going to your family house or your friend and they have offered some food to their gods. They have offered some food fruit or some food to the gods and now they are passing that kind of fruit to you yeah is that what you are asking yes, me yes yes what should i do can i eat that fruit fruit is halal papaya halal banana halal coconut halal it's halal but now that fruit is being offered to their deities can we eat haram we cannot eat i know this babe. when i became a muslim when i went back to my family house my mother, they are Confucius, they are Buddhist, so they have a small god, a mini god inside the house. And each time when they want to pray to their god, they cannot pray empty handed. There is no adapt. That means you don't respect your god. You must offer your god some food first. Before you ask something from your god, you give something to your god. Offer him some food first. So they will put fruits. They put some uh, roti, some buns, and also some pork they put there. And then they have some fruit inside the refrigerator. Now they have used out all the fruit there. Suddenly I came home and come, and then he said, bring down the orange, bring down the orange from the, the place they put for their God. And then they bring it down, they said, this is orange, go and eat. I said, no, no, no. I said, this is orange. Is orange haram? They don't understand. But I say, no, orange is halal. But I don't want to eat orange today. I try to be, use my wisdom. Stay away. 
Because anything that is served to any idols is haram for us. We cannot take it anymore. But provided you, uh, but provided you know it. Suppose if you are unknown. To yeah, if you do not know, Alhamdulillah, that is your risk. That is your risky. Don't worry. You know, stay away. Because we want to take care of our iman. You know, in our country, our people believe if you keep on driving, and at the corner there is always accident. They say there is a bad gene there. The gene who always take people's life. And what they will do? They will put some food and offer to the gene. And sometimes Muslim like us, young Muslim, when you bypass that area, you saw some fruit and some eggs. You look, nobody is taking care of it. You take some fruit and take the egg. And then the one who offered this will come back. See, the jinn have taken our fruit and our egg. They say, this jinn is very strong jinn. So you want to save your life if you always use this fruit? Put more fruit. Put more egg. Which jinn is it eating now? The Muslim jinn is eating. We are eating. This is halal na'uzubillah, haram. It is haram. Don't eat that. May Allah save us and save our iman. But if you do not know, may Allah forgive us. Jazakallah khair. Take another question from the front. Remember, brother, keep it on the topic, inshallah, and clear. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Asik Kanwar. Wa alaikum salam uh, I am a project engineer working in Wipro Technology. I belong to West Bengal from a small village. And when I come out from the education purpose from, my, from our village, I was influenced by the lecture of Dr. Zakir Naik, Israr Ahmed and a uh, lot of scholars. And I have started to keep beers and wearing skull caps and strictly following the Islamic rules. But when I go back to the home and some aged pupils, just like grand grandparents or uncles, they said that you have not properly aged to keep beard and skull caps. And when I said them to wear hijab, the ladies, they also some uh, feel irritated and they told me that uh, why are you following so strictly you will not get married you will not get good girl or uh, this type of things they feel I feel irritated so how I will treat them yes you must treat them with kindness and respect them you must have a lot of patience because Allah said what our sobil haq what our sobil sob after you convey the truth to them you must have a lot of sabar it's not easy I know but if they are worried about your cap Take the cap out. You look younger. No problem. But if they are worried about the beard, you say, no, I love my beard. They say, do you love me or you love your beard? Sometimes your parents say, do you love me, your mother, or you love your beard? I love mom and I love beard. You cannot say, I love my beard. No, you must say, I love my mother. I love my mother and I love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So we must convey the message with wisdom don't push them nobody can change immediately except with the hidayah from Allah our duty our duty is to convey and have patience even Prophet Muhammad take times so don't give up brother yeah and don't run away from them and don't scold them and don't show your angry face in front of them with love approach them with love Mom, I love you. Sisters, you look so beautiful, mashallah. You look more beautiful if you wear hijab. Ah, I don't want to wear hijab yet. I will pray for you. When you have time, talk to her again. Talk to her again. Inshallah. If you approach them with your heart, not with your lips. Because Ali said, Al Kalam is a karaja min al lisan, dakala azan. Is a karaja min al jinan, dakala jinan. If what you say come from your heart, will enter the heart of the listener. If your, your, what you say come from your lips, it enter the ear, it don't go to the heart. And may Allah strengthen your iman, inshallah. May Allah save our family. I request you and to the whole audience to pray for my pillagers so that they follow the right way. Amin, amin. Allah dihim, Allah yahdihim, jami'an, inshallah.